Okay, welcome guys. Today I'm going to be talking about using layer masks or masks in Lightroom and how we can use them effectively to edit our images. So I'm assuming you know the basics of masking in terms of sky selection, using a linear or a radial filter. These have been around for a while, but I'm going to be showing you today how to use these effectively for very specific and localized selections and how this can greatly improve your editing and your Lightroom workflow. Okay, firstly, I'm going to start off with just very basic masking in Lightroom. This will cover very quickly. Then I'm going to jump into the more advanced masking and I'll hopefully show you something you don't know. So I'm going to be using some pictures that I captured on my recent trip to Lesotho and I'm going to be showing you how to edit these. So I'm starting from complete scratch with the raw files and we're just going to be using masking today to bring these pictures to life. Okay, so the first image I'm going to edit is this photo from Malachiwane Falls, which I shot last week when I was on my trip to Lesotho. And you can see this image is great. It's got really nice dynamic range, protected all those highlights in the sky. If you look at the histogram, nothing's blown out there. A little bit dark, but we'll recover that um, in the post-processing. So this is the raw file. Um, if you have a look on the top left, you'll see the so shot is a 50th of a second, F14, ISO 6400 at 24 millimeters using the Nikon 24 to 120 millimeter lens. So if you have a look at this image, the first thing that's going to probably stand out to you is that the sky is much lighter than the foreground. And this is going to probably happen in most of the landscapes that you edit where you have a sky and a foreground. It's only when you start to cut out the sky or it's very dark that we start to get the sky and the foreground being behaving very similar in terms of dynamic range. So because of this, I would treat these two as separate entities when editing. And this is a good way because what we want to do to the foreground is we want to lift up some of those shadows. We want to pop those whites. Whereas in the sky, we want to do the opposite. We want to add contrast, we want to protect those highlights. Um, and maybe cool it down a bit just to create a bit of color balance. So if we treat these as separate parts of the photo for editing, it'll just make it much easier to bring everything together at the end of the day. So to do this, we're just going to use very basic masks, starting off very simply. First one is we look on the right, you'll see a little circle with a little dotted line around. That's the masking tool. And then there's a bunch of masking options. So the first one we're going to do is select sky. And you can see it's created this little sky mask for us. And if you get a bit confused with your masks, you can even label this one sky. And if you look in the little box, white is what's selected. Uh, black conceals, white reveals. That's a quick way of remembering it. And it's done a very good job of selecting just that sky layer. The AI is very good now at selecting, whereas before it was a bit tricky to select and we had to play around a bit. Now it just gets it right almost every time. Then we're going to create a second layer. So we're going to click on sky again. And now we're going to come to the right and click this invert button. And this is just going to create the inverse selection, which is our foreground. And we can call this one foreground. So now we have our foreground selection and our sky selection. We're going to do few minor adjustments on these just to bring the, the image into balance. And then I'll show you how to do more localized um, masking and editing. For the sky layer, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring out some of those whites a little bit, bring out some contrast between that dark sky in the background and the white cloud. And I'm probably going to just cool it down a bit just to get rid of that yellow tinge and to um, create a bit of color balance between the foreground and the sky. And if you look and see, we've blown out a few little spots so we can just bring those highlights down a little bit just to protect that, those blown out areas. And bring the contrast down a little bit. There we go. So a few little areas that are still blown out and I'll show you how to fix those later on. But for now, that's pretty good for our sky. And now we're going to go into our foreground layer. And for our foreground, we're going to bring up some of the shadows, keep some of that contrast and maybe bring up the exposure a little bit and maybe some of those whites in the foreground. 
So that looks really nice for the foreground. We've lifted up all those shadows. But something you can notice now when you look at the difference between the sky and the foreground is it kind of looks like if you look here at the back, like the foreground's been stuck onto the sky. It doesn't quite blend in like it did before. And that's probably because we've recovered a little bit too much shadow, but we want to recover that shadow. So what we can do is we can darken these mountains on the back ridge line, which will make the blend from the foreground into the sky a lot more natural. And it won't look like the foreground has then been stuck on to the sky. So how can we do that? Well, we're going to use selective masks. So firstly, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a sky select mask. We're going to invert it. So we have the foreground. And then we are going to subtract using a linear gradient. Now, if I draw that linear gradient up, you can see red is what's been selected. And if you have a look now, we're only selecting that back ridge line. We're also selecting some of these cliffs in the front that we want to get rid of, but we want to make sure that we have this back ridge line selected. So a quick way to get rid of the selection on the cliffs is we can use another subtract. We can use a radial filter or a linear filter. I just like the radial for this. And then we can just create a very soft deselection on the areas we don't want. You can also use a brush if you want to. I just find using the radial gradients a lot, a lot quicker. Here you go to subtract. Radial gradient. Just be really across that side. So now a very soft selection on the edges and then a more solid selection in the center. And then we will go and we'll add some contrast to that and add some blacks and maybe reduce our exposure there a little bit. So if we zoom in, let's have a look before look very pasted on and now by darkening it the blend into the sky just looks a lot more natural and that's just a quick way of just using these selective masks to create a natural blend between the foreground into the background okay so that was very basic masking using select sky and just linear gradients now i'm going to start progressing to more effective masking where we can select very specific areas Okay, next let's address these highlight blown out regions. To do that, we can select a radial filter or you can use a brush. I just like the radial filter because it's just quick and easy. One thing to notice with the radial is you'll see there's this little red dot. Um, if you pull that, it'll make a second circle. And this is a good way just to control your feather. So no feather to 100% feather. And if you look on the right, you'll see the slider moving between no feather and 100% feather. So I like to keep it between 80 and 100%, very soft. You don't wanna see the edit that you're doing. And this is a good way of not doing that by having a big feather. But now you can see we've selected bits of the sky we don't want, we've selected clouds we don't want, we only wanna select those very bright areas. So to do that, we're gonna hit subtract and we're gonna click on luminance range. So if you have a look, we have a slider for luminance and on the left is black and on the right is white. And if you move the slider here, you can see we select um, the lighter areas. So if you have a look on the screen, you'll see. And as I move down to the dark areas, it'll select more and more of them. And then this little bar at the bottom is your feathering. How feathered do you want it to be? And for this, you want it quite feathered. You can see if we make it quite harsh, and then we do something to the sky, it's gonna make these weird artifacts that we don't want. And the edit's gonna be very obvious and we don't want people to see that type of harsh edit. So we wanna keep the feathering very soft and we just wanna select those very bright bits that were blown out with the red. And then we can go down to our highlights and we can just pull those down a little bit and just control them. And you can see just by doing that, you're not seeing the edit that I'm doing and it's just controlling those highlighted areas. 
So you can just repeat this um, up on this side. There's a few little red spots. Just doing it very quickly. Radial filter, subtract luminance. Move the slider down. Keep the feather. And then just pull the highlights down just a little bit till we get rid of <clears throat> those blown out areas. That's a very quick way of just controlling those highlights without having to darken the whole image. So the next part that I want to show you is again, very similar using the luminance range, but we want to pop these colors with the light hitting onto our foreground and just accentuate those areas. So to do that again, radial filter, I do like the radial filter quite a lot for this type of work. And we're just going to put it over that area where the light was shining on the side of the cliff. And then we are going to subtract using the luminance range. And we're going to pull it down until it's only picking up those bits of green and where the light's hitting. So we don't want to be picking up all the rocks. And then I'm just going to soften it a bit just so we have a very soft glow. We don't want it to be obvious that we're using a radial filter. And then for this, we can pick up the whites. We can pick up a little bit of exposure and we can pick up a little contrast and then definitely want to pick up a little bit of saturation because where the light's hitting on the foreground, there will, it'll be more saturated because there's more sunlight in that area. And we could potentially warm it up a little bit um, as well. And we could maybe bring up the shadows just a tiny bit. So if we look now at before and after, you can see where that light was hitting there. We're just accentuating that area. Okay, we're going to do exactly the same thing um, on this side where the light's falling between the cliff. Radial filter, subtract. And you can see how quick this is. is you can use the paintbrush or the linear gradient. I just find the radial gradient with the luminance for this particular image is very effective. So there we go. We're just getting those soft bits on the edge there. And we're just going to pick them up a little bit. The contrast, quite a bit of saturation. I'm just going to warm it up a little bit. And then a little bit of the whites. And there we go. Starting to come together now quite nicely for this photo. And if we go and we have a look at the before and after, you'll see quite a big difference. And that is just using the masking tools. So just popping the light in certain areas, creating a nice white balance between the sky and the foreground. And that's all we've done. So the last thing I want to do this image in terms of masks um, is add Again, a radial filter with luminance, but this time we're going to pop the waterfall. So you can see what's happened here is with this little mask, it's maybe picking up a little bit of the sky. So it's a cool little trick that we can do here is we can also then um, use a brush to get rid of some of the areas we don't want. But let's first use the luminance area and let's see what it looks like. So let's subtract luminance and we want to just have the waterfall. There we go. And we don't want it to be too strong. Let's just zoom in here a little bit. You can see what's happening. And you can see it's picked up a little bit of the areas on the cliff. So you, we, we can do, yeah, is we can just go subtract using the brush. And we can make that bigger. And now wherever we brush is just going to remove any of the selection, the selected areas. It's done a little bit at the top here. Let's remove that and a little bit on this side of the cliff. There we go. So now we have a very nice selection just of the waterfall. And now we can go and we can pop that a little bit, pop up the exposure, some whites, and then I might soften it a little bit by reducing the texture and the clarity slider. And we could even make this a little bit cooler just so it stands out a little bit more. Oh, let's even pick up the highlights a little bit, just really pop that waterfall out. So now if we go have a look at the waterfall, we can see 
it's standing out quite nicely if we look at before and after with that mask without the mask with the mask so the waterfall really pops out quite nicely it's a very effective way of using masks in your editing workflow in Lightroom and you can see we use very basic masks from select sky and foreground to more advanced very custom selective masks based on luminance and if you look here you can see the before and the after and this is just using the masks what i did in this tutorial and you can see how effective using these selective masks can be in improving your lightroom workflow so we haven't touched any global edits anything like that and you can imagine now if we go and do a few tweaks on our global edits how effective and how nice this final image will be